Trapping plays a very important role in modern-day wildlife management. Professional wildlife biologists monitor fur bearer populations to maintain a healthy and sustainable harvest of this important, renewable natural resource. Trapping provides recreation and income for licensed trappers across this country. Who's Your Trapper Outdoors is brought to you by Who's Your Trapper Supply. J3 Outdoors, manufacturer of the Hags Bracket and Body Trap Spring Clip, Leatherwood Creek Trapping Sense, Weeby Knives and Fur Handling Tools, HTS Productions, Who's Your Trapper Deer Sense, and Leatherwood Wildlife Art. All right, last episode of Who's Your Trapper Outdoors, uh, final episode, episode 16. I'm going to do something different on this one. This was going to be muskrat trapping, marsh muskrat trapping. Justin and I took a quick trip last year. Um, and trapped out of kayaks. Uh, so it was, we had a really good time. Unfortunately, we had just a couple days to check traps. Uh, we followed, you know, we followed somebody else. So uh, um, anyways, we were catching muskrats that had already been trapped. So, um, like I said, something different for the end of the season. I want to thank everybody for uh, the orders that they've placed and all the support that, that you've given us. Uh, without that, none of this would be possible. Um, and if you haven't checked out our new website, you might give it a look. Um, much more user friendly, uh, much more um, easier to find product, that kind of thing. So, uh, like I said, if you haven't checked us out, you might check out our new website. I want to thank our sponsors, uh, J3 Outdoors, maker of the Hags Bracket and the Spring Clips. Uh, certainly on this episode with the muskrat trapping, we definitely used the Hags Bracket. Uh, really simple to use, just drop them in and you're good to go. So, uh, you can really set them up quickly. And then Weeby Knives. Uh, one of our mainstay uh, products that we use for uh, big fans of the Weeby Elite Fleshy Knife uh, and then all the skinny knives that they have. So uh, uh, both great companies, uh, both have great products, both have products that we personally use. So uh, that's, that's important to us. All right, I want to mention our photo contest, the Show Us Your Bottle Photo Contest. We've got a couple weeks left. Um, just basically show us your catch or end of the season catch. Um, with uh, the bottle or product that you used from the Leatherwood Trapping Line. So, uh, uh, and then you'll have a chance to win uh, one of two uh, $100 uh, Hoosier Trapper gift cards, and we'll also send you one of our Leatherwood uh, lure uh, decals just for the entry. Um, I want to um, remind you that the First Shed Series, although it's not on a regular schedule, will continue in the off season. Um, and um, uh, that is just about everything that goes on with um, uh, trapping that's not in the field. So, you know, anything from fur handling to equipment, prepper, prepping equipment, that kind of thing. Uh, so I wanted to just remind you about that. Well, and one more thing. <laughs> we got a new show out too, Trap House Podcast. It's anything and everything trapping related because we're all addicted to it. Yep. If you're watching this, you probably are addicted to trapping. But uh, Charlie's a co-host myself we're on there chit-chatting speaking to people across the country on numerous topics so chime in we already got two episodes up i'm going to launch one probably next week one after you see this so right and well it's uh, numerous topics that relate to trapping yeah, all, yeah. it's all trapping. trapping yeah it's all trapping and uh we're on all platforms right now itunes google play stitcher spotify youtube facebook uh, I don't know what else there is out there. We got it covered. So yeah, if you find something that we're not on, <laughs> send it yeah, to us. Send it to us, and I'll try and figure it out. But we are definitely on a ton of platforms. So, anyways, so yeah, check out the podcast if you haven't already. But there's uh, there's two episodes already up. So, and just lastly, the next uh, beginning of season eight of Who's Your Trapper Outdoors will be on August second. So August second is a Friday, 2019. That'll be the first episode. Um, so. Uh, certainly uh, keep that in mind we'll send out our email newsletters and and uh, when that time comes and we'll, of course we'll hit Facebook and all the notifications on that uh, so so just remember podcast first shed series between now and August 2nd and um, I hope you enjoy the episode
All right, here's our first day set, and um, this is just kind of one of those fun trips. It's only two or three days. Got this uh, fish and wildlife area here in Indiana, and you have you have to get drawn for it. But uh, we've been we couldn't start here until the 15th of December, and uh, there was a week there that was really nice, but we were too busy to get down here. So then we uh, then everything's been iced up. Uh, we had a major Arctic blast. Uh, you know, people have been ice fishing or whatever. So we've, we've got just a handful of days before season goes out. Thought we'd come down here and give it a try. We've been fighting some ice. It's pretty warm today. They got up to like 54, so it's melted a lot of ice, but it's been very windy. So we've got a lot of one side, you know, it's just got piled up of ice and the other side's, you know, available. But anyways, we're, um, we're setting up this uh, last little marsh right here before it gets dark. Um, and uh, uh, we've got the, um, we'll, show, we'll show them to you, but we've got the, uh, uh, baited um, poles with the hags brackets, one and a half coils sitting on those. And then I've, we've got uh, several places where we can stick some colonies in here, uh, kind of last minute. And uh, we've got the kayaks here. We're, we're uh, loaded up. It's been it's been um, it's been really windy. Justin got out and did and, and was able to get some set uh, with the kayak, but uh, I was working off the bank. Uh, so the two of us teaming up like that worked actually worked out pretty well. So of course it worked out really it'll work out really well if we catch critters. We didn't get a lot of traps set, kind of the logistics of all this. It's something completely new for us. Um, you know, we're, we're pulling a trailer. Uh, tailgate won't go down unless we unhook the trailer, just that kind of stuff, you know. So, um, and we, we did set a few coyote traps just for the heck of it. They, this, they do allow you to coyote trap here. So we'll see what happens. We're, like I said, just kind of a fun trip, something different to do. And uh, uh, it's awesome because it's a huge uh, waterfowl area. So there's, there's been snow geese, Canadian geese, all kinds of ducks, uh, sandhill cranes, all kinds of stuff flying around. So kind of cool, and, and you can probably hear them in the background right now. But uh, uh, anyways, uh, uh, just, just an awesome place. So anyways, we'll see what happens tomorrow. All right, we're just along this edge of these cattails right here. And um, we uh, set up these fiberglass fence posts, they're electric fence posts. This is a six footer. You can get six footers and four footers to, and you know depending on how bad the mud is and the depth of the water um, you know obviously determines which one you're going to use could have got by here with a shorter one but uh, um, that's what i've got and then um, got the hags brackets on here um, super handy and then um, just the bracket with a carrot and some lure on the carrot and then we just set this trap in one of the grooves. We're putting these, this is a one and a half duke, which goes in the bottom slot. And it just sits right under there uh, on the bottom slot. And then the water's just directly over the trap. So when the rat climbs up on there to get the carrot, catch him in. What we got? We got see all the fresh root shoes and stuff like that. Oh yeah. So I just pushed out a place right there. And same on that one, there was fresh stuff right there. So I just put a trap up on that. Put a little lure there to help help them to go up to the right place so we'll see what happens this is this is actually new kind of trapping for justin and me we're we're not we're not marsh muskrat trappers so we're we're learning <laughs> we don't have a lot of marsh in indiana to begin <laughs> no. with so <laughs> this is like the only one there's a couple others but they're way up north last set of the day last set of the day end of the day beautiful sunset January 27th, after a major thaw off, after a major Arctic blast for several days, so it's kind of nice. I don't think we're going to have a very long period of this thawed out weather because it's supposed to get cold again in a couple days. So we only have two or three checks on this trip. So, but we'll do what we can. It's been a good time though. It's awesome, and it's not something we do typically do. So, which makes it even more fun. So. Trapping products by J3 Outdoors, the most versatile and efficient trapping devices on the market. Who's your trapper deer sense? Success speaks for itself. All right, here's the situation. It's a rainy mess, and we got a couple staked out bait poles. 
and I come across on my uh, kayak here um, yesterday threw some traps in there's only a few huts that we could see in here and um, I set a, a double on this hut a couple more down that way but I could already see when I came up right there nice rat right by the back leg I had him staked off my chain isn't as long as I'd like it to be I'd like him to be a little further out but it worked it drowned and he was done for this one's a little further out and you can see the tail so very nice two rats a um, little bit of muskrat lure that uh, on the side of their hut here where they like to feed and hang out throw a trap down and a little bit of lure and call it good pretty easy just gotta make it to the huts yesterday we were fighting ice today we're fighting the rain but uh, we'll see what else we got coming in hot <laughs> how'd you do got three rats back here cool four huts three rats take it yep especially we're in here for seconds since, since this has already been hit so right all right um you can see i walked right here but here this is real muddy water from those muskrats coming in and out of here and i set a colony trap in here last night we've got two big old rats slammed in there so i'm gonna reset that one and I set another colony over here. Yeah, it's good thinking. So I'm gonna actually move that into this run. Make, make, always make sure your doors are working. And you can see where they're going up right up here in the bank. It's kind of a no-brainer. All right, traps missing. We'll see if we got anything. Yep. Hags bracket with the, with the carrot. Can't beat that. Hit Justin with the muskrat. Hey. <laughs> hey, these these uh, whatever you want to call them, garden rakes, potato rakes, whatever, really handy to have for this kind of stuff. Because uh, as you can see, I'm not wearing shoulder gloves. I'm not, you know, you, I've been up to here with my uh, with my um, arm finding that muskrat. So sure makes things a lot handier. All right, got another rat here. Hey, one. Talk just a second on these um. Number two, uh, Victor's. These were sold in the 70s and prior as a um, fox trap. And they really weren't that good of a fox trap, particularly when the one and a half with Victor coils came out. That was the go-to fox trap, the one and a half with the old pinch pan. That's where it started at. Well, this trap, it really doesn't have a place uh, for what it was originally intended. Several years ago, people started using it for muskrats. Keep talking. And it, it is a great, great muskrat trap. So, uh, mink trap as well. People come in the shop and they want to fix them up and they want to foil them, getting ready for coyotes or whatever. It's just wasting your money because there's just too much jaw spread between the levers. The levers are too low. The coyotes pop the jaws. The whole thing just not a good trap, but an excellent water trapping trap. So, um, anyways, if you get a chance to pick these up, they haven't been made for probably 40 years um, or so. Uh, but it, there's a lot of them still floating around. There are a lot of them sold. But anyways, it's it's a great great muskrat, great mink trap. Uh, you don't want to set it where you can catch coon, but um, muskrat mink, great trap, great choice. So picked up one rat on this on this on this uh, hunt right here. One thing, um, as we said, we're the second group of trappers in here, and so you know, at a place like this with this big a hunt, typically you probably catch three or four rats and. 
so we got limited sign and, and uh, uh, the cream's been kind of caught so you know we're picking up one here one there that kind of thing so but that's fine we'll take it I've got a rat must wash those number two Victor square jaws yeah First yeah they're not they're not super strong they got lots of jaw spread big pan just got a lot of weight to them yeah they're they're cool and our setup, you, know, you got a loose trap there, Justin. We'll show the setup on that too, just for. A loose trap? Yeah. Yeah. I can get one. What do you want to do? Show what we. Well, I was just to show uh, basically, we, we added uh, a couple swivels in there. Not all of them have, um, have three swivels, but all of them have at least two. And then I added um, additional chains, so we'd end up with about two, two foot to 30 inches of chain, just kind of depending on how the chain broke. That way there's enough there to get them out, um, get them drowned, and... and um, Try and get them in that deep water. Right, and then swivels up with twisting and all that kind of stuff. So um, the, the stock chain on that trap was actually pretty short, so that's, that's way too short. But set up like that, we're good, so. Yeah, and this, this hut right here didn't look too hot, but... I. I just put one on it anyway, just in case. Uh, just to, really, just to kind of see how these things work out here. But that one paid off, obviously. Moving on. All right, end of the day, got a handful of muskrats to skin. We're certainly not the long line of muskrat trappers, I guess, so. No, <laughs> but we will be. <laughs> <laughs> we are getting the baseline for next year, that's for sure, so. Um, yeah, fighting ice and fighting wind and fighting uh, rain today until about two o'clock and just, you know, late January trap is just kind of one of them deals. But anyways, caught some awesome rats, big, great big rats, big healthy rats, winter fur, and uh, we were just looking at them. They're not, don't seem to be bit up yet, so that's good too. We'll get these uh, taken care of and call it, call it a day. We've got to thank Matt right away, our um, trapping buddy. He, uh, host. <laughs> yeah, our, our host for, he's letting us use his fur shed. He's got an awesome fur shed here. I always like fur sheds. He's got muskrats hanging here, muskrats hanging there, coyotes. So, uh, really appreciate that and the Brotherhood of Trappers. So. Yep. We got a fair amount more sets out today, mm -hmm. setting on the side of huts mainly. So, high hopes for tomorrow. Yep. We'll see. See what happens in the morning. So, anyways, get these skinned up. I've been a professional trapper for over 40 years, and in that time, I've skinned literally thousands of animals. I've learned that it doesn't matter how cool a knife looks on your hip. What really matters is sharpness and reliability. And that's why I created the Weeby Wicked Sharp line of replacement blade knives. These are knives that will quickly skin your critters without skinning your wallet. Visit WeebyKnives.com to get the new Monarch folding knife with three replacement blades for just $19.95. Weeby Knives, Wicked Sharp. Leatherwood Trapping Sense. Success speaks for itself. All right, check day two. Kind of woke up to a frosty, frosty, <laughs> uh, foggy morning. Last evening when we were setting the last traps, it was getting pretty foggy then. And uh, um, as you can see, it's still, it's starting to burn off, but it's, it's still foggy and created all this frost. And um, we're, we're fighting a little bit of shelf ice already. You know, this trip was, um, just kind of a three day, two, uh, anywhere from a two to a four day check, depending on the weather. So season goes out, um, today is Sunday. Season actually in Indiana goes out on Wednesday, so we had a really short window. Weather didn't permit us to get down here earlier. Um, so this is kind of a learn as you go, which is kind of our typical uh, trip deal. But um, uh, I think the biggest thing is we've got a baseline for next year. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, and how to, how to do this. Uh, one thing I'll say is we came down here and we said the first day we were here, we were, the ice was really bad, um, couldn't get access to some places. And as the day went along, it got pretty warm. And a lot of that, between the wind and the sun, a lot of that ice was uh, melted by the end of the day. So we we got a handful of rats sets out. and, and um, But we were setting some coyote traps and kind of messing around with that. And, and to be honest, that just kind of waiting for the ice melt to, to do that. So. Right. But, uh, you know, under other circumstances, assuming the weather was going to be decent, maybe it was earlier in the year, you know, I, I wouldn't set a coyote trap. I wouldn't probably wouldn't even bring coyote equipment with us. It would just be 
stay focused on the water trap and stay fo focused on the muskrat trapping, uh, which is primarily what this place is known for. Uh, certainly plenty of coyotes here, but it, it's hard to do both and it's hard to have the equipment mix for both um, when you got working out of just a um, pickup truck. It can be done, but it's not, it's not as efficient or as productive. Um, and we trap enough variation of, of geography and, and um, animals that uh, um, we don't, for this type of thing, we don't really need to run the mixed bag line. Um, right. So we can catch coyotes at home. Right. In this trip. And we're in, we're in we're in Indiana. We're in a home state, so we're right. just a couple hours from home. But um, I think uh, just like I said, it's a learn as you go trip, and certainly um, we're, we've learned a lot and um, got a baseline for next year, assuming we get drawn again. And uh, you know, we'll see how the rest of the day plays out. We've got shelf ice starting to form on the edges already. It got fairly cold last night, so you know, who knows what tomorrow's going to bring? It's it's going to be um, a high of 40 tomorrow with snow flurries and tonight's supposed to be pretty cold so probably tomorrow we're pulling in uh, call it call it a call it a season here but uh, anyways it is what it is it is what it is yes yeah. pull some rats out of the water yep late January <laughs> trapping so traps missing that's a good sign <laughs> That'll work, man. Got, I hate to got him before the ice came. Yep, I hate man. I hate to pull these when uh, I know it when it's starting to produce. You know, second night and we're already pulling because it's iced in. That was one of, that's one of those uh, muskrats with a white tip tail. Sure is. It's a special one. <laughs> Might have to keep it. I see you left the carrot for him. Yeah, it stinks. You know, basically two days. Half the day yesterday was busted because of rain. I mean, we're really just getting started and you gotta leave, it's kinda, but uh, we'd be in bad trouble, I think, tomorrow morning. <laughs> the ice would be so thick and we got some stuff way out in the marsh and the kayaks wouldn't just through bust it. through there. So, get while the getting's good. Woo -hoo! Catch one. Third ride on this hut. How do you like trapping out of a kayak? Pretty, pretty nice. Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty, pretty efficient. Pretty productive. It doesn't uh, productive. It doesn't have a lot of cargo space. Is probably the biggest downside. But man, they're easy to maneuver, and especially if you're by yourself. So, got a muskrat? Yes, we do. Oh, he's wrapped up. Oh, he's wrapped up good. <laughs> Hey, I, I got one here that, that was um, eaten, you know, typically you would think eaten by a mink, but whatever it was, it pulled, pulled the trap and everything off the top of the stake. So it had to be a, some sort of raptor, a hawk, or uh, maybe an owl, or, <laughs> or an eagle. I haven't seen any eagles, but whatever it was, it literally picked the muskrat up, pulled the thing off the top of the stake, and the stake was, you know, probably... Um, was it a four foot stake or a six foot? I, you know, I can't remember. It was in quite a ways, but it was probably at least four foot above the water. So whatever, well, it would have been six footer then. So, um, <laughs> haven't had that happen before. So that's something we may have to address because obviously the wind, we don't want traps flying away with the, the, yep. some sort of um, prey food attached to it or whatever. Okay, we got another rat here inside of this little hut. He's money. Two back feet. Yeah, he, he, wasn't, going anywhere. he wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. Cool. That's not a very big one. Not as big as some of these other ones. They're, they're pretty nice quality rats. Yeah. Few have been anyway. For Indiana, this is basically this late January. It's quality wise is about as good as they're gonna be. So. Right. Sad we're leaving. Even though, you know, 
everything was against us as far as weather conditions and other trappers in here and all that, but this is fun. Yeah. If you don't, I mean, I don't see how anyone could enjoy something like this. <laughs> this is a blast. Just getting out on the water and there's plenty of wildlife to check out and see and get your exercise in there too. It's kind of around. <laughs> This is actually in a one and a half claw dude. This one's set up with the hags bracket in case you want to use it for a baited pole or that kind of thing. The uh, number twos don't the jaw the jaw clearance won't allow you to use one of the brackets on those. So, um. anyways, just uh, kind of on the edge of the main body right here. And, I've just got these huts here and set them up and we haven't caught any doubles I don't think today it's just all been real singles just here and there which uh, is evidence of you know muskrats being taken out of here already so. got just a handful more to check and we're done Let's see how it goes huh. another rat yep got another rat on this and that's it we're done done pulling traps done checking done pulling so got one empty trap here you know, had this been early in the season, we had the first crack at this, we're probably looking at, you know, we probably catch anywhere from four to eight muskrats right here, average, I would think. So, uh, right here on this point, and got the open water behind Justin, he's on the camera. So, yeah. But, well, I mean, we'll take it, and there's, there's plenty of rats uh, in, in all this marsh area that, you know, we will repopulate this. Um, you know, for next season. This was uh, significantly hurt by a drought too this past summer. So um, a lot of this, you know, when we came in here um, in uh, October, a lot of this was dry. So definitely, uh, definitely affected, affected the muskrats too. So. Anyways, not a bad day. Beautiful weather. A lot of fun. This is just kind of one of those relaxed trapping trips, and we're not not hitting it super hard. And, just having a good time and catching some critters. So, we'll take it. Kind of surprised we didn't see any sign of a mink or anything. All right, we just got back from a two-day muskrat trip. <laughs> <laughs> Two days. <laughs> hey, gotta get in where you fit in. It's better than one day, I guess, or it's better than not going. But anyway, so we, we it was a quick trip, but we were actually intended to stay for another day or two, and it kind of. We were fighting ice this morning. I think we got a little gun shy from that. And of course this afternoon it was beautiful. Right. But, and then for the amount of traps we had set and for the amount of muskrats we caught, it wasn't. Right. It just wasn't doing that good. It just so. wasn't, I don't know if it, staying another day really been worth it. I don't, I don't think but. it made a whole lot of difference now. And we, I mean, we, we caught, we were setting muskrat huts and we only were catching singles. We didn't catch any doubles and you know, and, and a lot of them, there wasn't any activity going at all. And so. Um, uh, just, just wasn't, you know. But did we have fun? We had a great time. We had yes. a great time. Kayak, yes, kayak trapping. So that was, that was cool. And I show the first shed in here. This is, um, we're in disarray. The mass is bigger than our catch. <laughs> this, we got, we, this is after trapping a little bit here in Indiana. Um, New Mexico trip, and then the trip we just got back from, uh, which was, like I said, two days. And then, um, it wasn't even that, really that thick of a trip, it was just here in Indiana. So anyways, we're, we got kind of a big mess to clean up. Question and answer. We've got a fair amount of questions about traps and why we choose to use MB-550s. Um, over the years we've, if you've been watching this for season, for seven seasons, you've noticed that we've um, used a number of different traps and, and had kind of a mixed bag. And I even at one point said, well, that way you don't have all your eggs in one basket. But kind of changed my philosophy on that and we basically have gone for our land trapping to Minnesota brand 550s. And um, several reasons for that. One, For one, it's a really nice made trap. It's ready to go out of the box. Um, doesn't require any adjustment or anything like that. Uh, because of the posi trip pan, can't set the tension unless you build, unless you start bending the dog. 
which I'm not going to do. So, um, and then it's, it's night latch so that it clicks into place. The reason um, that I like this trap or that we're favorable to this trap is um, I think that it gives us uh, a lot of flexibility on what animals we're going to catch. As soon as you put a, a what you call, may consider a coyote set or a fox set or a bobcat set in the ground, you have the chances of catching any one of those three essentially. Some bobcat sets may not catch coyotes, but on occasion they still do. So um, to me this just gives you a lot more versatility from a smaller animal to a larger animal, even a raccoon. So, um, uh, and, and like I said, as far as quality, it, it, it doesn't really get any better than this. I think it's a, just an excellent trap. So, um, and then we've been two coil versus four coil. This trap is strong. I mean, it is a good, strong trap. It's stronger than most uh, standard two coil traps. So I just plain think it does not need any additional coils. Now, in a few years after some use and the springs, you know, kind of weaken up a little bit, you may need to add the, the additional four coils on there. Uh, they just slide right on, pop into place. I don't think that that um, uh, certainly is necessary when they're new. We don't sell a lot of four coil traps. People have kind of backed off of that a little bit, but um, that's just a tremendous amount of um, power uh, and very difficult to set if you use the four coils on there. So uh, with this trap as it is, just don't think you need it. So um, I think it's plenty fast, plenty strong. The animal gets in there, you're gonna hold him. Um, I, my guess is that if you had pullouts with this trap, you're going to have pullouts if it were four coil or not. It's just that circumstance. So, um, anyways, some of the idea with a four coil trap is that it's faster and also will come up through frozen uh, material quicker, um, but um, or better. Uh, but I think with this trap as it is, it, it's just fine. It'll, it'll work in those circumstances too. So it's plenty fast and will come up through a crusty frozen top. If you go to the larger traps, and, some, and I know these are these are both, uh, for instance, it's the outside the inside laminated 650 in Minnesota brand 650, and here's one of the cast jaw. Both excellent traps, uh, excellent excellent quality traps. Um, but I mean that is a coyote trap only. Essentially, it would work on uh, uh, bigger cats too. But um, to catch a fox or something like that on this is just way too big. So I think just. Looking at this one here, you just like I said, you can go from small animal up clear to coyote and and um, and have have everything covered. Um, but um, so that that's another reason that we're here. Like I said, if you're catching the fox in this, is way too much trap. Just just the weight of the trap is way too much. So and then we've got um, the Bridgers here, just the standard Bridger. Get a lot of trap for your money. I mean, you get a lot of trap for your you know bang for your buck on that trap right there. There's there's uh, um, uh, certainly a trap that um, is is a, a good choice, and then the the fully uh, modified version of the same thing with the lamination, additional four coils, and then the base plate on there too. So sometimes when you go to the lamination or whatever, that you need to boost up your springs just because you got more weight on the on the jaws um, with the lamination. But um, you know, my my first recommendation is buy the best trap that you can buy. Uh, that your budget will allow, that you can afford. So um, if you buy the best to begin with and you don't have to upgrade later, uh, or you know, as you gain experience and uh, um, appreciate the differences in traps or whatever, then you, know, you, you may upgrade in the future. But uh, anyways, that, the NB550, like I said, is just kind of the mower. We feel it, is, it just gives you the wider range of animals that you can catch with that same trap. So I hope that helps clarify that. Um, and um, this uh, isn't a commercial per se, but it certainly is uh, the reason that we go with the MB550. Thanks for watching the show, guys. Just want to let you know that we have the new catalog available. Pretty sharp looking cover there with Charlie working a muskrat hut. Um, you can get this by calling the shop here at any time. Just give us your home address and we'll be glad to send you one. Or you can visit us at whosatrappersupply.com and sign up that way, request one. It's, it's real easy. It's on the home page. It's a brand new website. It's pretty sharp. And uh, you can also sign up for our email newsletter, which informs you on uh, show dates when they're coming out and product highlights and shows or, uh, specials that we may have going on at the time. Occasionally a blog by Charlie. So just a little bit of insight of 
what's going on here at Hoosier Trapper will be in those newsletters. One thing I wanted to add too is the First Shed series is still out there, so don't forget about that. We send them out randomly. There's no dates available. Anytime we think there's a tip or something useful that could help someone out in the field or in their shed, we'll go ahead and throw it out there for you. And it's real clean cut, straight to the point. Anything from trap modification to fur grading or whatnot, just anything that's done in the shed, not necessarily done in the field, those tips can really be helpful. So be on the lookout for those. And go ahead and follow us too on uh, all the social media sites. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, the list goes on. Just find us on there and, and we'd love to hear from you. Comments, like posts, all the good stuff. So we'll see you next time.